Two students took some measurements on a vapor compression refrigeration system, which uses R134A as its working fluid. They recorded two pressures, 0.6 bar and 7 bar, and three enthalpies, 80, 225, and 300 kilojoules per kilogram, in their logbook, but did not do a good job of specifying where they were measured. They recorded the refrigerant flow rate as 0.06 kilograms per second. Determine the refrigeration capacity, the coefficient of performance, and the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. So this question, we still need to understand what a vapor compression refrigeration system looks like. So the four basic components, a compressor, a condenser, throttling valve, and an evaporator. The problem is two pressures were measured, seven bar and 0.6 bar, but we don't know which of these four state points those pertain to. And also three enthalpies were measured. And again, we don't know where they were recorded. So we don't know which of these four state points those correspond to. The mass flow rate is 0 0.06 kilograms per second. So that we do know. Well, first of all, what are we asked to find? Well, the heat transfer rate into the evaporator, that's the refrigeration capacity, coefficient of performance beta, and the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. So assumptions we'll be making here, steady state, neglecting kinetic and potential energy, constant pressure in the evaporator and condenser, and finally, no heat transfer in the compressor or the throttling valve. So we need to determine where those pressures and enthalpies that were measured correspond to on the diagram. So the best way to do this is to recall what a pH diagram looks like for a vapor compression refrigeration system. So here I'm showing just a typical pH diagram. So just to review this, we have pressure on the vertical axis, enthalpy on the horizontal axis. This is the saturated liquid line. And this black line here is the saturated vapor line. And a typical refrigeration system shown on a pH diagram, the compressor process is out here in the superheated region. So this particular diagram shows the actual process from 1 to 2, and it also shows the isentropic process from 1 to 2s. The condenser is from 0.2 to 0.3, that's a constant pressure process, so it's a horizontal line. The throttling valve is the vertical line from 3 to 4, and it's constant enthalpy, so that's why it's a vertical line. And then finally, the evaporator is another constant pressure process taking place inside of the liquid vapor region, so that goes from 4 to 1. Well, realize the two pressures that were measured, there only are two pressures in a vapor compression refrigeration system, the pressure of the evaporator and the pressure of the condenser. So even though they didn't record where they made these measurements, the 0.6 bar must be in the evaporator. So P4 and P1 are both 0.6. And the 7 bar at 0.2 and 0.3 must be in the condenser. So we can tell from our knowledge of a vapor compression refrigeration system that P1 and P4 are 0.6 bar, and P2 and P3 are 7 bar. Likewise, the three enthalpies, we can figure out where those are as well. Notice 0.2s is not a real point. That's a hypothetical or an ideal exit. So they would not have measured an enthalpy at that point. So there only are three enthalpies. We drop down from this point. That has to be the maximum enthalpy. So H2 has to be 300. The intermediate one here at 0.1 has to be the in-between value, 225. And the enthalpy of 0.3 and 0.4 are equal, and they have to be the lowest enthalpy in the cycle, or 80 kilojoules per kilogram. So our knowledge of the pH diagram tells us where all of these were, even though it wasn't recorded in the logbook. So we can make a little table here that gives all four state points, the pressure, and the enthalpy for all of them. So now that we know the enthalpies at all of the state points, we can go ahead and consider the energy equation to figure out the heat and work transfers that we're after. So first of all, the first law for an open system, we write the general complete equation. We have steady state, and we have kinetic and potential energy ignored. 
So when we apply this to the evaporator, of course, there's also no work. So Q dot in the evaporator is M dot H1 minus H4. That's our mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy. And again, we figured out which one was H1 and which one was H4 by looking at the pH diagram. And that works out to a refrigeration capacity of 8.7 kilowatts. Next, we move on to the coefficient of performance. And so the coefficient of performance is the Q dot of the evaporator that we just found divided by the compressor power. Well, the compressor power we can express as H1 minus H2. The evaporator, of course, was H1 minus H4. So because we know all of these enthalpies, we can calculate the coefficient of performance, and that works out to 1.933. So we conclude the coefficient of performance is 1.933. Finally, the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is the ideal work divided by the actual work. And so we can write that in terms of enthalpies as H1 minus H2S over H1 minus H2. Now, of course, H2S is not one of the three values that were recorded in the experiment. So we're going to have to figure out what that is. Well, at point 0.1, we know 0.6 bar, and we know the enthalpy there as well, 225. So table A11 tells us that the entropy at that point is 0.95314 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So because the isentropic compressor has no entropy change across it, we know the value of S2S. Combining that with the pressure at the exit, 7 bar, table A11 would, will give us H2S of 275.70 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's the last of these four remaining enthalpy values we need here. So we can go back and put these numbers into our expression for the isentropic efficiency. And we have 225 minus 275.70 over 225 minus 300. And that gives an efficiency of 0.67596. So we can conclude the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 67.6%.